Are we starting right here? Yeah, let's do it right here. Are we doing it now? We could. Are we doing it now? Let's do it. Let's go. It's time. Put on play pants. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's uh, Play Pants, the podcast. We're back. Uh, this is episode 90. Uh, he's Jason Ginty. My name is Rod Ryan. And I don't remember what happened. Oh, my shit blew up last week. That's why we didn't do a podcast. Or no, that was two weeks ago. My ship blew up. Yeah, you were bounce, bouncing through some the 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 uh, webcam microphone. It sounded wild as dogs. And then uh, took last week off, and now here we are again, ready to go. Episode ninety, dude. I'm fired up. Fired up you know, today. You know what I was dealing with? My fucking truck being stolen. I wanted to ask you about that. Now I'm sure you've told this story. Why don't you give me the elevator pitch of the uh, stolen truck? I want to hear how that happened. Well. Can I just get it out of the way? And I didn't say this on the radio. So this okay. is a uh, Play Pants pod exclusive. Um, what I failed to share with the radio audience is I fucking left my keys in my truck. That seems like a pretty major part of the story to leave out. So go ahead. I mean, say what you got to say. I'm not, Call I'm me not. a dipshit. All of it. No, nah, it happens. So. I, I mean, I can't. I, it's dumb. I'm an idiot for doing that. An absolute sure. idiot. Now, back up here. Anytime that I've left my Tundra unlocked, some fuck face goes through it in the middle of the night. They're looking mm -hmm. for a gun. They, you know, they don't break anything. They go in, they look in the center console, they open up the glove box, they might pull out my little, you know, user manual or whatever, and then they don't put anything back, but. No. That's how I find it in the morning. I'm like, shit, I left my truck open. Yeah. Um, it's amazing the things that they've left in there. I mean, nothing really of value, but um, I feel like there's been a few things in there that they might have just kind of grabbed. And they're specifically looking for, I guess, cash, some idiot to leave their keys in there or a, a weapon or something. So right. Computers. I know that this happens. I don't know that they go through my truck. Are they, I don't know if somebody walks by and checks the handle every night. I'm assuming that now moving forward. I have a key fob on the new Tundra, and mm -hmm. so there's no key inside, and I guess I'm getting used to that. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying this is my yeah. situation now. Groceries in the truck, keys, fuck. Throw it in the, uh, the cup holder. Yep. Unload the groceries. Kid calls. Boom. Now I'm chit chatting on the phone, blah, blah, blah. I just don't go back out to the truck. And then that's it. The truck is now open with the keys sitting in the uh, cup holder. So you could have left a note saying, Hey, come get it. I could have left the bow on it. door open and maybe threw a neon used car for sale. Brand new, but you know, barely used. Put some candies in there or something, you know, anything really Thanks. sexy it up. Thanks. Appreciate you helping. So, I get up in the morning and uh, I'm like, oh, man, one of my buddies is playing a trick on me or something. <laughs> and then it just hit. And I remember my dad saying that when he's got when he's got his car stolen, he felt like he was an old man. He couldn't remember where he parked it. And he's like, no, no, no. I know I parked here. Ask the security guard to fly him around the, you know, the tops parking lot back home or something. And then he just realized he had a like his stomach. He said, I just felt sick. He goes, my car was gone. And so yep. his car got stolen. That's how I felt in the morning. So. Um, I get in the Jeep and I go to work. All I know is I got to work, you know, like, okay, I'll deal with this later. I get to work, sign in, get everything. And then I Google, what do you do when your car gets stolen? As I'm getting ready for the show, I Google that. It says report it right away. You got a better chance of getting your car back. Sure. Sure. So Alex walks in, I tell him what happened. I said, I think I got to go home, dude. I think I have to work on this today. My first thought was go to work, dude. Always. Yeah. After my truck was stolen. I mean, you, you got to do the show, right? Like, it's the most important thing in the world. I mean, no one totally. is going to be able to start their day without the Rod Ryan show, right? No, 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 no. no. I don't know why I think the way that I do. So I go home. And I start working on it. Cops come. They're hearing Alex and Tessa talk about it on the radio. It's not processing that Rodney Ryan has reported a stolen vehicle. It's amazing Correct. to me. I had that happen to me at a store this weekend. And just Rodney Ryan is not processing with people. 
They walk in. She sees microphone. She's like, oh, you're Rod Ryan. We were just listening to them talk about you. On the... She's like, we listen every morning. I'm like, okay. So right. then I got to tell them the whole story. I show them. The, I've got video. I've got cameras all over the place. Not that it really does any good. It, they don't. At least they it don't. helps them a little bit. Right. Um. So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot to it. I'll just say that within seven hours, uh, HPD got my truck back. It was awesome. I realized that I had the Toyota app and that we could kind of track it a little bit. Oh, cool. So uh, when they assigned me an officer that took over my case, because I had a bunch of people helping me. Guy, guy just texted me. He's like, man, you don't know me. But brother, your name's on everybody's radio. We're all talking about you. <laughs> He's like, I got access to all the cameras. We saw that your truck was, was pinged over here. It's being pinged around town. These shitheads are driving it around. <laughs> and they're just scoring drugs and hookers and whatever it is they're doing. Sweet. So I get it back around two o'clock. I get the cop calls me. He's like, we got your truck. You got to come get it. So... I told this story to somebody here and he said, did they, you know, did they, did they clean it up for you or anything? I'm like, no, HPD is not going to detail your car. Okay. No, they got no. it back for you. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> Three 16 year olds and a 22 year old. They got them at a, uh, they got them at a, um, a gas station. And I pick up my truck. I go home. That's it. Well, I go in my truck. I open the door. It smells like holy hell in there, Jason Ginty. It yeah. smells like your feet. No, come on. Whore crotch. Yeah. Weed. Sweaty balls. And corn chips. So it didn't I mean, smell any different? It was the worst. <laughs> it, it was the worst. It's a brand new fucking truck. Uh, it stunk so bad, dude. That's funny. And then I said, hey, guys, uh, <clears throat> none of this stuff is mine. Three backpacks, four phones. All stolen, probably. Yes, all of it. Uh, laptops. <sighs> it was about like six or seven portable chargers. Good vape Lord. pens. There was a saw on the back. I, I, dude, it was disgusting. Get all that shit out. And I got to drive and it stinks in there. And I got to go pick up my kid. Yeah. And on my fancy radio on the screen, see Breezy's iPhone. My truck wants to know, you want to hook back up to see Breezy's iPhone. So see Breezy stole your truck. See Breezy hooked up his iPhone. Now, let's say this was really, really serious. Don't you think you would want to not hook up your iPhone to something electric because they could trace it? There's got to be some sort of memory. There's got to be something that you could tie into the computer yeah. system to figure out what phones have been attached. It gives you something to look in the database. It, it blows my mind that there's not more criminals caught in this day and age because they're dumb. Most criminals are always historically have been dumb. OK, most criminals are dumb. But yeah. Nowadays, they're really, really dumb. These guys were obviously dumb. You'd think that they'd just be catching criminals. Like, okay, Houston's a big city. Okay, what is it, like 6 million, 7? What do you got in there? 8 million people? I don't know. 6 what? million. 6 million. Say it's 6 million. That's a lot. That was one of probably, what, 500 of that day that, uh, that got stolen? I mean, there's got to be statistics on this shit. Yeah, I mean, it's – lucky. Listen, I, know, I know that I got special treatment. You know, the guy even said, it's like, okay, Rod Ryan, we got to get this back to him. You know, he's, you know, this dipshit's going to be talking about it on the radio. Well, that helps. Like, we got to get know? this guy's truck back, you know? So, um, the, the, the final thing I'll say about it is I get my truck back. I got to go pick London up and I got to go far to go get her. So we're driving home. We're in the, uh, we're in the HOV lane because I got a kid in the car. I'm like, all right, two people. What and I'm kind of going along with everybody. Cop behind me. Woo, woo, woo. And now I'm not speeding. And I'm like, what's going on? Now it's not, it's not clicking in yet. It's not, it is not clicked in yet. But I'm not speeding. <laughs> all right, I'll pull over. Maybe my registration. It's a brand new truck. I got right. plates on it, real plates, not paper plates anymore. 
when I pulled over, he pulled over and three other cop cars fanned out behind him. Now I have four cars, all of their lights on. And I said, oh, shit, they think this truck is stolen. Yeah, they didn't take it off the record. It got or pinged. Ugh. It got pinged up in, in Conroe. Jesus Christ. London, stay in the car. Now, I don't know what to do. I got my hands up like this. Turn off the car. I turn off the car. Hands up. Or no, I first roll down the window. Turn off the car. Put your hands out the window. And I'm just getting directions. Now, I'm scared. I'm telling London, stay in the car. They're like, get out of the car. So I get out of the car, and now I'm looking at him with my hands up. I have four <laughs> guns drawn on me. Holy fuck. Dude. Their doors are open. They're standing behind their doors. I have four pissed off police officers with their guns drawn on me, dude. <sighs> That's scary as shit. They're like, turn around. So I turn my back to them, oh. and I'm walking, and I'm like, it's not stolen. This is my truck. I mean, dude, anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm walking backwards, and they're stopping traffic. There's one. There's just one row of traffic now going through. They have guns drawn on me. God. And I'm walking back, and I hear the guy, oh, that's Rod Ryan. I'm like, oh, my God. Jeez. I was dying. Dude. They put their guns down. Wow, man. But obviously, it didn't come off the old ping or whatever was going on. HPD did not put it push it through yet yeah so it was still yeah. reading in other counties that it was a stolen truck so it pinged when i was about an hour i don't know about an hour away from here doing their job doing their <sighs> job so i got a pretty high level uh uh law enforcement here in the neighborhood he's like did you tell them there was a kid in the car and i said no he goes dude that should have been the first thing you said if London goes out the other door, oh, she's in dude. a uh, London's in a booster seat now, right. so she can kind of undo her thing. Um, before, with the with the huge ten yeah. point clicker, she can't get out. He said, if she would have went out that door, he said that that would that could have been bad, you know. Yeah, but you're not uh, thinking of all that all at once. You got guns at you, and there's shit happening. Correct. Around I you. just I told. Mean, I mean, I I should have said, listen, my daughter's in the car, guys. Be cool. I, but I told, I'm like, do not move. She got out of her seat, went into the driver's seat. She was scared, right? Shit, yeah. She was scared. Daddy was scared. Mm -hmm. You know, she could. I guess she could tell 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 that I was scared. I was trying to be cool. I'm like, London, just stay in your car. They think we're bad guys. We're not. You know, we're not the bad guys. So yeah, Oof. what a, I mean, what a capper to that story. Okay. So as you're telling the story, right. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, thank God you're fucking white <laughs> because <laughs> you know how that goes, dude. And I'm not going to make this a, a thing, but I'm telling you, as you're saying, I'm like, God, dude, if you were a black dude, can you imagine how that would be I, uh, different. And that's not a, a subject I want to go down the road on that, but I'm just thinking the whole time, I'm like, this is what these poor dudes are up against. <laughs> I know I lit a candle here, but like, wow, dude. Like that was, is um, hard fucking core. Guns are drawn at your face. Yeah. Four of them. And the, I, the seriousness, the stone, the stone look of their faces yeah. behind the door behind the doors of their cruisers fanned out four of them. And they're just like, like they're in formation. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was wild. And yeah. then they're like, well, let's go over here. Let's go over here and clean. You know, the guy's like, Hey man, Rod, we're sorry. You know, here's what happened. This is on the side of the road. He goes, we got to go over here and clean this up. So we pull into like fucking home Depot and, uh, and I, you know, I'm not mad because it's not their fault and they're doing their job. Right. You know, they, they're definitely like getting their, the Conroe police who pulled me up. They're getting their digs. Well, HPD, like, you know, they're letting me know that right, HPD right, right, right. should have had this done already. <laughs> and I just said, I go make it right with my kid. You know, I go, I, you got to make this right with my kid. That's a good call. So they're being totally cool. High five and everything's cool. I mean, you know, I don't know when the last time you just got rolled up on an officer, but there's four of them there. There's so much shit hanging off their bat belts. There's no, just shit everywhere. Ridiculous. You know? They can't I mean, run. There's there's stuff. <laughs> there's just shit everywhere. You like know, janitors. It's wild. Yeah. 
So they're being so cool with my kid and everything. And, you know, it's all cleared up. And then again, okay, you go. <laughs> just like I picked up my truck. I don't, I just thought there'd be more. They're like, uh, okay, well, hey, you know, the, sorry. We that wow. now they did it to file some paperwork. Guy texted me. It's weird how the cops have your number. It's like they have your number. Uh, it's like, hey, officer, blah, blah, blah. I need I need your daughter's name. Sorry, but she has to be in the report. Sure. I'm like, okay. Fair enough. Um, what a wild dude. You want to talk about like an emotional day? Yeah. I, I, I'm leaving out a ton. I went out on a fucking stakeout in the middle of the day on my own because I got an address from where the truck might be. Oh. I stay, I was on a stakeout. You're looking for fucking my neighbor sweet. said, get, my neighbor's like, get out of there. Yeah, I'm like, are you pulling weird. me out of the stakeout? He goes, you're not on a stakeout. Just get out of there. <laughs> sweet Breeze. What's his name? Sweet Breeze is jamming tunes. See Breezy. See Breezy. See Breezy was jamming tunes. And then next thing you know, he's 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 ripping tunes on your truck. And ripping then you're bombs. the guy getting pulled over with four pistols at your face. Ripping horrors. Dude, you want to, I mean, just the unbelievable emotional day. I was absolutely drained. So London and I, London and I get back to the house. She's like, "Oh, Dad, what are you fucking doing during the day?" <laughs> the the high level official comes out. He, he sees me pulling my driveway. He comes walking over, and my kid, and they thought we were the bad guys, but the bad guys, they stole the truck early, and Daddy got the truck back. Like she's explaining this, and I'm like, "Wow, those cops really." Really did a good job, but like this five-year-old is explaining it in a way that it really happened. They thought we were the bad guys, but we're not the bad guys. The bad guys were already caught, and she's and he's laughing, and I'm yeah. like, "That's," I go, "That's exactly what just happened." I go, Damn. "She really that was like the best story she's ever told." But you got to keep in mind, and you did the right thing in that part because like that would be a traumatizing thing for a five-year-old to watch. You know, your dad's got yeah. guns from the cops. It all of a sudden looks really weird all of a sudden. That could be something that will stick with you, but they sound like they've really kind of cleaned that up. Yeah, you know? I don't know that she saw guns. <laughs> she didn't. There's no way she saw. I don't think so. I don't know. I, I don't know what she saw. I mean, I... Yeah, I don't know what she saw. I wouldn't even ask her that part. Nah, no, we, you know, we've kind of, we were joking about it because then, you know, we get in, we go out in the yard, we take Vu outside. My neighbor's like, okay, you, when story time? I'm like, go get some beers. Let's, we need some porch beers. Let the kids play. I need to sit down and <laughs> decompress for a minute. Lock your truck. <laughs> I know. Wow. I really, really hate that part of the story. That's the worst yeah. part of the story. You think, oh, what's the worst part? The four guns on you? No, that I left my keys in the car. It's like, and damn it. All, it's, it's like dominoes that fall. One thing after the next thing, after the next but thing, after the when next When it's your thing. fault, and you know, it's, listen, people still did a bad thing. They stole my truck. Yeah. But it's my fault. And that just, I, I, I'm a guy that will beat himself up on that stuff forever. Like, you could have avoided that whole day. Now I'm going to the dealership. Okay, they they pulled off the dash cam, probably thinking it was looking at them. Right. And, you know, there's a ding here and a couple little things. You know, insurance. It, it You know, police reports, this. Like, fuck. Guns drawn. All that stuff could have been avoided. Had the you guns drawn. Keys. The guns drawn. It's like, yeah, there's no big deal. I mean, it's dealing with insurance and shit. Jesus. It's not. It, I mean, that's the it's worse. That is awful. Dude, I, I had my car half stolen years ago. I come home, park like you would, wake up the next morning, and I go to go to work, and I walk out, and I had parked in front of my house, right, where I was living at the time, and uh, I walk out, and I'm like, same thing like you said. I go, huh, maybe I parked out back. <laughs> so I go around, and I had a back alley that you could park in behind my house. So I walk back there, and I'm like, huh. So I'm walking around. I'm literally walking around my house inside, scratching my head, going, did I get drunk last night and take a cab home? Did I? I start mm. retracing steps and I'm like, what happened? So I'm looking around. I'm like, I call a few people. I'm like, hey, man, did I, did I leave my car at your house? No. All right. So I'm like, well, let me call the cops. See what's up. And I call the cops. They're like, yeah, what color is it? I'm like, oh, it's like a maroon. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. They're like, hey, go out your front door and look down the street. We've gotten reports there's a maroon Dodge sitting in the middle of the street. 
I walk which out. Car, which looked, car was this? My my little shitty, uh, what was it? Plymouth Breeze. <laughs> oh, the Breeze. Yeah, the Breeze is nice. The and, Plymouth uh, Breeze. What a piece of garbage, but it was what I could afford at the time. They're like, it's sitting in the middle of the street blocking traffic. I look out like, oh shit, there it is. I found it. Thanks, guys. So I walked down and they had, Somehow they had pulled like where your door closes, the window where it meets the frame. They had peeled, bent that back, got in, unlocked it, and were trying to hotwire it. And somehow they got it into gear and were pushing it down the street. Well, they couldn't figure it out, so they just ran and left it there. So I got in with my key, started right up, backed it up, put it in my driveway. I'm like, all right. And then the cops came out and, you know, they looked at it, filed a report. But that that feeling of walking around going, I am pretty sure I parked my car out front last night. What mm. the fuck is that all about, right? It's a uh, sick feeling. It's the worst. And then what is, what's one of the things you always think about when that happens? Because, I, you know, you I've had car stereos ripped out of my car before. And you're like, if I would just once catch that motherfucker in the act, I'd kill him. Right? That's what you always think about. You're like, I would beat the fuck out of these guys. Right? That's what mm -hmm. everyone is thinking. So years ago, I had that, that big giant plymouth right that old 69 plymouth fury right big fucking it's red big, one big red no, or big blue. blue it was light blue big blue yeah old blue and uh four door monster of a car like a city block long loud just the whole thing right and i drove it because i could beat the shit out of it and it, you couldn't hurt that car so me and my wife go out downtown and we're parked in a parking ramp right go out partying hanging out some event right hanging out come back and we're walking through the parking ramp, walking up the ramp to go jump in my car and then come home, right? We're walking up the ramp and she's like, hey, your brake lights are on your car. Like they're on. I'm like, oh shit. Because an old car, you know, it ain't telling you you left your lights on, dummy. There's no chimes. It's just, you're fucked. I'm like, and I'm thinking, oh fuck, I left my lights on. Shit. Well, then they went off. I'm like, well, that's weird. Why would they go off? And they come back on again. I'm like, Oh, man, I must have like a short or something or I don't know. It's an old car. Shit happens, right? And then it's like I could see it moving a little bit, like rocking, like somebody's in it, fumble fucking around. My wife goes, I think someone's in your car. I go, stay here. I go, stand right here. I said, and this is back in the early days of flip phones. I said, hey, something happens here. Just call 911 or whatever. Call the cops. She's like, what? I'm like, so I go sneaking up to my car and there, all I see is my doors open on my car and there's a dude with, you know how like you'd be under your dash trying to fix some wires on your radio or something back in the day. There's a yeah. dude under, like under, you know, he's laying in the driver's door under, you know, his head's down by the brake pedals and he's trying to fucking twist some wires together. There's a dude in the process of stealing my car. Hang so, on a second. Yeah. You're driving, you're driving the car. No, no, this is parked in the parking ramp still. The car okay. is parked. Okay, we walked yes. up on it. We saw the lights blinking, and it's like, holy shit. So I walk up, and I, there's a guy in the process of stealing my car. Now, when oh, you're geez. in that position, when you're laying underneath, you're, you're, you're just, you're stuck. You're not going anywhere, right? Yeah. If you've ever tried to change a light bulb in your dash or anything like that, you're fucked. So I've got about an eighth of a second in my stupid head, and I go... The right thing to do here would be to turn around, walk away, call the cops. That would have been the right thing to do, right? What do I do? I run up there <laughs> and I fucking grab the guy by his shirt and just come chat. on. I swear to God, dude. Yeah. My wife is like, I pull him out, right? And he gets up. And the first thing, dude, I've never hit somebody in my life. Okay. <laughs> I've never fucking, well, okay, one time when I was like 12. <laughs> I fucking rip on this dude. I punch him once, punch him again, right? And then I pull him out by his shirt and I'm ripping his shirt as I'm pulling him out. Adrenaline is raging through my veins and I slam him up against the car next to me. And in this process of me slamming him against the car next to me, right? And I got my elbow in his chin, in his throat. Yeah. He's fucking like five inches taller than me. And he's a big meaty dude, <laughs> like chubby dude. And I went, oh, fuck this is gonna hurt he's gonna murder me but this kid he was like 20 years old he was so fucking cooked on booze and drugs he had all kinds of shit in the system and he was just like floating around like he was his brain was cooked right whatever the fuck he was on so i grab him and i i 
I shove him against the car. I go, what the fuck are you doing, dude? He's like, I needed to ride home. I'm like, well, you're not stealing my fucking car to get home. So my wife's calling the cops. She calls the cops and like 10 minutes later, they show up, right? They come screaming into the fucking parking ramp and uh, they get out. And then the kid is just kind of sitting there in a lump because he's so fucking drunk or stoned or whatever. And his shirt's he all didn't fuck- run away. He couldn't. He was so fucked up, dude. He was just like, okay, man, I'm sorry, dude. And he had like claw marks on his chest from, from where I grabbed him and ripped him out of the car. And like I ripped his T-shirt to shit when I did it. So he's sitting there, his shirt's all fucked up. So the cops come up, guns drawn, and me and my wife are standing there fucking all hands up like, hey, it's not us. It's that dude. It's that dude. And the guy comes up and they got guns on his fucker. And I, you trying to steal this man's car? Are you trying to steal this man's car? And the kid's just like, yeah, man, I was needed a ride home. Come he was on. so fucked up. That I'm fucked like, up. He, he didn't have fucked. any idea that like, his thought wasn't to get out of there. No, he's like, all right, man. He just sat down after I fucking gave him some biz. He sat down. And I didn't hit him or hurt him because I wasn't going to hit him hard enough to hurt that big fucking kid, right? Thank God he was cooked because I'd have been dead. So then the cops are like, what happened to your shirt? What the fuck happened to your shirt? And, uh, well, he, he, he hit me and the cop looks at me and he goes, did you hit him? I go a couple of times. He goes, he never touched you, man. He didn't hit you. You did that. Oh God. I'm like, okay. So they come the cops come over, they put the cuffs on the kid and then they like run all the fucking background check on the kid. And he had, he was wanted for all these bad checks and other cars stolen and all this other bullshit. And then they figured out who I was, you know, Oh, your kids on the radio. I listen all the time. And it was like, same thing, but it was so fucking scary. But in that second, I had a decision to make, dude. And I made the wrong decision, just so you kids know. I made the wrong fucking decision. Yeah, now <laughs> it could have been mean, bad. When was this? Oh, fuck, like 90. Fuck, I don't know. Uh, okay. 2000 and something. I don't know. Okay. Wasn't married yet. So it was pre 2004. Okay, so yeah, you got to assume now everyone has a gun, right? Even then I should have assumed it, but I just, it was the heat of that moment of like, holy fuck, how many times have you wanted to catch somebody in the act and beat the shit out of them, right? I had the opportunity and I took the wrong thing. I totally did the wrong thing. I mean, that was a dumb fucking move on my part. And by the way, I can't hit, I can't hit anybody. I I got no punch. You slap them. Did you slap them? No, no, Get it was weird. My I felt bad Get, and all this shit, but I'm Get, like, nah, fuck that kid. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, don't, don't keep your keys in the car, I guess. Yeah. What, what I know. Learned? Fuck. It was shitty. Stupid. But dude, everyone listening right now is like, oh yeah, I've done that before. I've, I, I do it all the time. Cause like with the, when you don't have to put your key in a, in the, in the, you know, the ignition anymore, it's just fucking there. There's times like my wife's car, if I got a bunch of shit in my pockets, she's got a key ring, like a janitor. So I can't put that in my pocket. So I throw it in the console. There's times when I get out and I go to close the door. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you get the keys? I do it all yeah. the, time. It, all it's, the time. It's, I mean, it's a horrible lesson learned. And it's the first time that I left them in there overnight. But I constantly was using that. And even a couple of times afterwards, I put it there. I'm like, no, you dumbass. Just put it in, you know, scale down. Let's look at how many keys I really need. And then boom, no extra bullshit, just the fob, the house key, and that's it. Boom. So that was the other thing. And that was the one thing that I did say on the air. I'm like, man, bad guys got my house key. So everybody's kind of going, well, how do they have that? You know? And I I, I didn't get into it on the air. Because I just didn't, I I didn't feel like taking, taking the shit calls. Right. So I've got like a super fancy, it's not even one of those keys that says do not duplicate because you got a guy, they'll duplicate those. Sure. I got a super fancy locks here, super fancy key. I knew these dipshits couldn't go get one made. I, I mean, they could not get it made. Right. So when I got to the car, I'm like, is my house key there? I go, that was clutch because rekeying this house. No, it's five grand. Dude. It's five grand. <clears throat> every single lock, every door. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. You're like, well, just a front and door and a, and a side door, you know, front and back door. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. Not here. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be rekeyed. So I got my house key back. But Oof. that was the one thing that got everybody asking a lot of questions. Well, how? Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about it. I got it back. Stop asking questions. Fucking C Breezy and out there making key copies, dude. Fucking C Breezy, dude. He's rolling for a joy. And, and when I got my my uh, car almost stolen that one time, I talked to the cops afterwards, and they're like, look, most of these guys just want to find a car for a joy ride. They'll run this thing around for a day or two, and then they'll just dump it off in the weeds somewhere, light it on fire, and that's it. They don't give a shit or dump it for a bridge or something. So maybe this is, I don't know. I don't think it's karma. But uh, our friend Mike Davignon, we are, neither one of us have our driver's license. So we're like 17. Both of us are dipshits. Neither one of us have our license yet. Our parents won't let us get it. Um, we bought a car for $25. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> it was, dude, it was a cool car too. It was a Javelin. An oh. AMC Javelin? You didn't buy that for 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah. $25. There was like three you years they made me? that car. Yeah. It's like super rare. An AMC Javelin. Yep. We bought one for 25 bucks. <laughs> our our girlfriends were friends. So, you know, how quaint, you know, like mm -hmm. Mike's my best buddy and we're dating best friends. Brilliant. And they're camping. Um Outside of where Jason and I grew up, there's an area called Darien Lake, and oh you can camp God. there, and there was like an amusement park, and it's become Six Flags and stuff. So the parents of his girlfriend and my girlfriend is with her and her family. There's no cell phones. There's no nothing. No. Okay? Now, her parents, they know that these girls are dating douchebags. You know, losers, me right. and Mike. We come driving up to their campsite and find them. They know we don't have our licenses and they know we don't have a car. Yet we come rolling up in a car mm. <laughs> and we just hung out for the day, <laughs> drove back home and then went to Niagara Falls and left the car downtown somewhere. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude. Now, that story I've never told on the radio. <laughs> I probably wouldn't do that one. I probably wouldn't mention that one. <laughs> so you bought it from a guy who obviously stole it. And then you guys just left it somewhere with the keys in it, I would assume. Because why would he you're sell good at that? What? Why would he sell 17-year-olds a car? 16-year-olds. I think it's I'm 16. Yeah, 16. Uh, yeah, it's not smart. Yeah, we bought a car for 25 bucks. Let me look it up. You said the Javelin's really, it's it's not an AMC Pacer. No, no, Pacers, and they had uh, Gremlins, and the Javelin, Ooh. literally they made them for like three years. That's a pretty fucking rare car, and if you can find one nowadays, man, shit, that's worth some bread. Yeah. Okay, not the Gremlin, not the Pacer, and then what yeah. did I say it was? A Javelin? Javelin? Yeah, the Pacer the, is the Wayne's World car. Dude, we bought a Javelin. You should have kept twenty five bucks. That'd be worth a lot of bread right now, dude. <laughs> and drove it to Darien Lake to go say hi to our girlfriends, With and no then uh, and then uh, just came back, and then we just left it somewhere, and that was it. Dumb kids, God, like the dumb kids that stole my truck. Sixteen years old. I'm the same age. And it, had they had like uh, you know a way to plug in your phone back then, if they had phones, it had been breezy. Uh, <laughs> so our breezy. So so I'm thinking, you know, my Tundra doesn't really go anywhere. My Tundra, I because I really don't live that exciting a life. I really don't. Um, I mean, I don't think there's anybody that thinks I do, but I just don't really do anything. And uh, I think my truck had the fucking night of his life. So every time I get in, you know, it would come up. It's like, yo, Breeze, is that you? We going for, are we going to hit the streets? Like, no, it's just me. It's not C Breezy. Right. I feel like every time I go in there, my truck is hoping that Sea Breezy back. is back, you know, back hooking up. It's a bunion, Sea Breezy. It was the fucking wildest night of that Tundra's life. Yo, Breezy, when we hit the streets again, best night of my life. It's fucking like, fuck, Old Man River doesn't go anywhere. Sea <laughs> Breezy, come back. Fucking kid. <laughs> Knight Rider. Oh, it's fucking Michael Knight. Jesus. Where's the cool guys? <laughs> I go here, seven minutes to work, back. Weekends, go pick up my kid, come back. That's it. Get See, Breezy, 
fucking had uh, the tundra had the greatest night of all. Oh, there's probably pecker tracks all over those seats. I mean, just gotta be like just oof. Yeah, see, Breezy had some fun, man. So I got to get my kid at a certain time. I go right from the bad guys to an hour and a half drive to go get my kid, smelling like fucking whore crotch, driving with the windows down. I mean, I don't, I don't even have time to go get Fabrice. Okay, I got to get my kid, dude. She gets not even car, time for him. like, like this stinks. Not even time to go get one of those pine tree fucking air fresheners. Nothing. No, 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 no. Without getting into it, I got to be there at a certain time. It's oh, just, yeah. that's just what dad's got to do. Oh, so my God, dude. So I get her, car smells like a whore's ass, and then four guns drawn on me. It's just not getting better, bro. It's just, it's just, when is this nightmare going to be over? This is why you should be journaling. Remember we talked about this many episodes ago about you journaling? This is why you journal because this would be a great way to get this out and then done. Done. You got to journal. Well, what shit. the fuck do you call what we're doing right now? Pretty much journaling. We're the only ones listening half the time. I mean, I'm <laughs> I sure know. we I don't you know what's funny? I don't even listen to us. So, why would I? Speaking of that, Rod, not to change subjects, but I'm about to. We're going to talk about the top summer blockbuster movies of all time. We're going to run down our top favorites, which means movies released in the summer season since the release of Jaws in 1975. That was the first summer blockbuster movie. So we're going to kind of go through our favorite summer blockbuster movies because Indiana Jones is coming out. You got a Mission Impossible coming out. It's it's that summer season where it's like, yeah, let's go to the movies, man. Um, I do want to give a shout out to some people from Houston. Had a bunch of people over the, the last couple of weeks uh, listening to the podcast, took the pirate tour. So that was pretty cool. Um was really kind of weird. Like you're standing there and you're like, oh, hey, what's up, man? We listen to the podcast. And, and here I am dressed, you know, all pirated up and shit and uh, ready to do a tour. And they're like, they want to talk about the podcast. I'm like, man, I, I'm kind of going to do this tour thing, man. But it's it, afterwards, I try to talk for a couple minutes and stuff. And it's like to hear what people do and while they're listening to the podcast is kind of funny. Like there's a dude who took the tour this past week. I can't remember his name. Shit, I suck. Sorry, dude. Uh, but he he like uh, fixes cranes. He drives all over Texas just fixing cranes. And that's his gig, right? He's like, yeah, I listen to you guys all the time. And then this uh, this other lady awesome. uh, uh, listens quite a bit to it. She travels a lot. A lot of people traveling a lot, listen to the podcast. So uh, appreciate that. Uh, really appreciate you taking the pirate tour anytime you come to New Orleans. And then we got, was it two episodes ago? I can't remember. Uh, we were talking about one of our lists of songs, and I can't remember what the hell one. Of, oh, the blood songs. We we ran down uh, blood and vampire and songs a couple weeks, a couple episodes ago. And uh, so I just wanted to go in. Uh, yeah, it was we uh, episode eighty nine. It was our last uh, episode. Top five blood songs is what we got into. Okay, and you brought up on the podcast uh, a Blue October song, oh, right? God. And we were talking about Blue October and how you love them. And I said, I really like the band as well. And then you gave me a song to listen to. And I can't remember what the name of the song was. Bleed oh, Out. Bleed Out. Okay. So I said, oh, on the episode, I said, oh, yeah, you know, I don't, I'm not familiar with that one. I'll have to go listen to it. Okay. Great. So then um, we got a comment from uh, Rob on our uh, Play Pants Pod facebook page he said hey rod ryan solid list sir for your blood songs but that jag off friend of yours really <laughs> you know you know it's going to go downhill pretty quick when someone calls you a jag off friend and i'm like i've been called that plenty of times i'm good with it uh he says but that jag, jag off friend and he spelled it j-a-g i love that he goes but that jag off friend of yours really said he loved blue october and also he's never heard bleed out boo this man so i'm like well I got to respond to that because I want to, I want to, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick. I just, Hey man, let me respond. So I did uh, on our play pants pod page. I said, Hey Rob, you can be a fan of a band without knowing every song. That's the beauty of music. There's always room for discovery. And then I signed it. Jag off friend. <laughs> because I figured like, like if you make a comment on the play pants, pod, uh, one of our, our social media pages or our YouTube channel, you sign it, Rod. If I make a comment, I said, they know who they're talking to, right? Who's, who's coming? Yes. So I just said, Jag, our friend. So then Rob replies, and I thought my response, that was it. That's why we do this podcast. I've discovered a shit ton of music in the last couple of years doing this podcast and, I, and movies, and I love that. Um, so then Rob 
uh, replies to my uh, response. He says, hey, dear Jagoff, oh my, my, I seem to have struck a nerve. Feel free to hate me. I think that's a reference to the Blue October song, and I know that one. Hate I was me just and and oh my my is a, a Blue okay, October good. song. So he's you know he's like he's he's been funny. guys like they sneak in all the song titles in the weather now. I love it. I thought it was great. He says, "Feel free to hate me." I was just listening to the podcast here at home, but maybe I should go take a walk into the ocean. Moving on, I'll try to keep dropping tens like you. Keep up the awesome work, Captain. So he's, that's funny. Obviously, he listens a lot and stuff. Um, and he's doing, and he's and he's giving you a bunch of Blue October uh, song titles too. Right, 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 right. So it's pretty funny. I said, "Hey, man, no, all good, man." One of the reasons I do the podcast is talk about music, and I'm in, and I'm one of the reasons I do the podcast is to talk about music I'm into, and in return, I've been turned on to a bunch of songs I never heard before, and that's awesome. Thanks for listening. Good luck with the tens. <laughs> so I just thought it was funny uh, the back and forth that we have sometimes on this, and and again, man. If you call me a jag off or whatever, I don't care. It's all good. It's it's just about discovery. That's what this is about for me. You yeah. Know? There was a lot of love for Blue October on our YouTube page. And then uh, Immortal Warrior, uh, at Immortal Warrior, speaking of the blood list, uh, a quick tie. I, I can't go through all of these, but a quick uh, top five. Uh, blood in the Cut from K Flay. Now, I'm a K Flay fan, but oh, that's a good song. Like, like the Jagoff over here. I don't know that song, so I'll go listen. That's a good uh, one. Lincoln Park, Bleed It Out, great one. Yep. Blood and Roses, Smithereens. We definitely had mentioned that, mm -hmm. but didn't make any of our top fives. If You Want Blood, ACDC, fuck yep. yeah. Uh, and Raining Blood, Slayer. Um, they're using ACDC, If You Want Blood, for the promo to sell season two of The Bear. Are you watching The Bear? The Bear, uh, is that the... Restaurant? Yes, chef. Thing? Yes, chef. No, chef. Yes, I chef. You'll be, you'll, you'll be calling everybody chef afterwards. I I, I want to because I've, 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 I've missed – somehow this has gone right past me, and, and I just saw some ads recently. It's not, it's not succession, you know, where succession really was like – it, 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 okay, I'll take that back. I was going to go into Game of Thrones area, but it wasn't. It really wasn't. But succession did kind of take over the internet, though, a little bit. Right. And – I think that if you weren't watching Succession at some point, other than me blathering on about it, you must have heard like, ah, you know what? And maybe you you heard about it. The the, the bear's not really taking over the internet. It's on Hulu. Um, but you worked in a restaurant. I worked in a restaurant for a long, long time. And it just resonates. And season two started. And they're using If You Want Blood for the promo. Nice. And uh, it's good. I, I They're half hour episodes. It's only nice. two seasons. Season two just came out. Season one is eight episodes. Season two is 10. Uh, you can get in and out of these things easy. It, and like I said, it's on Hulu. Nice. The Bear. Okay. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. Because I think the one, the kid in there was the, one of the dudes from uh, that the old uh, show Shameless, I believe. Yes. Uh, that kid's an awesome kid. He, that dude's an awesome actor, man. He is unbelievable. So um, I'll check that out, dude. Uh, you want to take a quick break and then we'll come back and do our top five uh, summer blockbuster movies, Ryan? Yeah, after I tell you that if I would have hung on to that fucking car, mm -hmm. a 1970 AMC Javelin here for $76,000 on eBay Motors. Mm -hmm. Here's a 73 for 66000 Right. You bought it for 25 um, bucks. Here's a 72, a steal at $42,500. Mm. Um, Should have kept it, man. Should have. It was orange. Oh. The one that we had was orange. Here is... No, it's something else. There's only a couple of them on here, so that does lead me to believe that it's pretty rare. Yeah, I don't think the AMC Javelin was... It was only a few years, man, and it's a cool-ass-looking car, too. It's it's a fucking badass car. It was orange, had a black stripe on it, and then it had a black stripe across the front of it. I mean, 25 bucks, bro, it was a steal. Model year, 68 through 74. Okay, I was close. <clears throat> Not that many years, though. I was pretty close. Yeah. Fuck it, that's awesome, dude. You should have kept that. You'd think they'd be worth so much money right now. Of course, Thank you'd be God. in jail. But eh, what are you gonna do? My kid uh, is my kid is forbidden from ever listening to this podcast. Well, there'll be a time down the road when she's like twenty five. She'd be like, "Ah, look what Dad used to do with his jag off friend." <laughs> uh, the Rod okay. Ryan Show Care Store is back online. All new summer merchandise, looking good. Maybe see Breezy. Will Hook it up and get a couple of shirts, <laughs> a koozie, stickers, whatever, man. Rod's raising some money. 
to purchase backpacks for area kids in Houston who obviously need them. He's working with Houston Children's Charity, trying to outdo last year, raising $101,000 and passing out over 3,500 filled filled backpacks. Safe, secure shopping now on the world-famous Rod Ryan Show page at thebuzz.com. So when you're not having a stakeout, Chasing down car thieves, you are trying to raise some money for charity. That's a pretty awesome thing, Rod. Uh, Thebuzz.com. Get that shirt. Get that koozie. Summertime's coming. Got to have them koozies by the pool or when you're hanging out by the lake or whatever. So thebuzz.com. Thank you, Jason. Wonderful job on that. Um, So I sent you a couple top fives and you... I told those ones. (laughs) You nixed them. You're like, fuck that. (laughs) What? What? Top no five Dawkins. Okay, let's top five Dawkins songs. My first, re- my first answer to that was I'm literally sitting at my desk at work. I'm go, what? No way. Fuck's sake. I'm not doing Dawkins songs. For fuck's sake. I thought, you know, Don Dawkins turning 90 or something like that. You tomorrow. don't even like the guy. I don't like him, but I do like Dawkins. But you're like, okay, no. And then John Cusack's having a birthday. And I think we've kind of spilled the tea on this. What we're about to do is our top five. Yeah. That concept is ripped off from a movie that Jason and I have probably watched together a million times back in the day. Yeah. Um, the movie's called High Fidelity. And in that movie, within that movie, John Cusack and his friends, they discuss music and every. It's John Cusack's best movie. Um, uh, probably for me, it's his best movie. And uh, they do a lot of top five lists on the spot, yeah, you know, of things that are going on in their lives. And as a matter of fact, the whole movie is kind of based about him finding his top five former loves. Right. And the girlfriends and why they got away and he goes and seeks them out and stuff. So the whole movie is kind of based around this top five thing. And that's where we got the concept for doing our top fives. But um, I was trying to think, you know, John Cusack movies. I'm thinking we might have already done it, though. I think we might have. I, we probably could have checked that list that uh, Jordan made for us. Jordan Welch and the Machine. Yeah, but we haven't. <laughs> we don't. We don't really check that. Well, I list. like the summer blockbuster. Summer blockbuster movies. And I think when you first sent it to me, I'm like, man, we're gonna have the same five movies. But you, hmm. you're in. You're in a little bit more of that superhero space. Um, yeah. And when it comes to some of these <laughs> other movies. You know, there's a three year age difference between us, but boy, it, it, it comes into play early on when we start talking. I noticed like there's a huge discrepancy early on uh, right. when it comes to you. Like there was just things you're like, nah, I was a little too young. And then maybe I went to that when I was a little too young. So there's some of that. So I think right. that could play. I think that could play. So the, the criteria here was the top summer blockbuster movie. So it, what that means is a movie released in the summer season. It doesn't have to be a movie about summer. It's just a, it was released in the summer season because after the release of Jaws in 1975, the movie industry realized, hey, wait, this summer blockbuster, because Jaws was released and it was massive that year in 75. So they kind of went, wait a minute. So we put out, so they they started putting out the big superhero movies. They started putting out the the Indiana Joneses and all that summertime blockbuster movie thing. That's where it all kind of came from. And for a couple of years, didn't Will Smith kind of like own Fourth of July weekend? Independence Day and I think Men in Black. All Men that in stuff. Black. Yeah, even Fourth of July weekend, it's kind of your big, like, holy shit, we're going to go. And then movies. he put out like that Wild Wild West movie with kind of bombed. Yeah. But- but it seemed like I remember for a number of years, Will Smith was the guy. He was the Fourth of July guy. Right. Um, and everybody got out of his way for that. It was weird that like, he was. I mean, you know, Will Smith's super A-lister, you know. Right. Well, you know, he was. But that sort of fell apart on him with a hit on, uh, on, on Chris Rock. So the top five summer blockbuster movies. I, I, I suggest that we do this. So I'll, I'll, I'll go first, Rod. I'll, I'll, I'll dive in here because I think. Can- I'm, I'm going to throw a guess out there. I think we'll have one. I'm going to go one. Did, did you, be because I did this, and I'm not saying that you have to. Obviously, these lists are loose as a goose shit. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I had to see it in the theater for me for it to make my list. Some of this stuff I saw on HBO. Mm-hmm. I grew up watching it. And there's the association with it for me personally. And I'm not telling you to move anything around. No. But 
what, what I held myself to is I had to go to the theater the summer it came out. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think that's I, what I did. I don't know. I don't know what's on your list. I think I did for most of these. There might be one that I, I didn't, but uh, yeah, I think, I think pretty close to all of them. I did. Um, yeah. Top five summer blockbuster movies. <clears throat> Number five, uh, Jurassic Park from 1993. Dude, dinosaurs, the first one. Remember when that came out and you saw the previews? You're like, holy shit, those dinosaurs look real as fuck. And I just 93. Like, couldn't wait to go see that movie. I'm popping trucker speed and I'm doing freaking term papers. Yeah. I'm trying to get done with college. I'm too busy. I am not caught up in dinosaurs. Do I think Jurassic Park is cool? Yeah, I do. But I just didn't have time for it in my life when it came out. That's why it didn't make my list. Is it cool? Did I see it multiple times? I did. I think I ended up seeing it in the theater. Yeah. For some reason, I didn't have time for that movie when it came out. Yeah. For some lost years. For some reason, I did, and uh, I just remember like sitting in it, and, and there's that famous scene where like the the T Rex is like stomping or, or walking, and like they, they show the water, and it's in, in in the car, and it's you can see the rings in it, and you could well, feel it in the theater. Like you could they invented it. a new sound system for that movie, if I remember correctly. I believe they did. I I know Lucas I, did. I'm almost a hundred percent positive that if you went to a studio, if you went to a certain state uh, uh, theater. He invented a new version of Dolby, THX, blah, blah, oh, yeah. blah. There was something different for Jurassic Park. That's what got me to go see it because I wanted right. to hear what it sounded like. But I just remember like you could feel it. Like it was so like heavy and you're like, holy shit, what is happening right now? Yeah, it really made it a cool experience. So that was number five, Raiders of the – or I'm sorry, Jurassic Park. I just gave away number four, uh, uh -huh. Raiders of the Lost Ark, 1981. I don't know if I saw that in the theater. I want to think I did, but maybe not. The um, first one? Yeah, that was 81, so I would have been like 10. So maybe I didn't, but I've seen it a trillion times since. So um, you can't be Are you excited movie. about this new one that's coming out this weekend? Um, I'm indifferent because I was excited about the last one that came out, you know, uh, a few years ago. It had been the first one in a long gap, and I was like super excited. It's one where they – dealt with aliens and I'm like, it's fucking Harrison Ford. It's indie, man. It's going to be great. And then I was like, kind of bummed out about the whole alien thing at the end. I'm like, oh, is that where he jumps in a fucking old refrigerator and there's some explosion and the, yeah, the yeah off? nuclear, but I actually didn't mind that part. I thought it was kind of fun, but yeah, it, it just, it just didn't feel right. And this one, I hope, I think a lot of times they, they're playing to the audience too much. They're going to do all the gags to make you go, Oh yeah, I remember that. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, just make a good fucking movie. I hope it's good. I'll go see it at the theater because it is indie. But if they look at what Top Gun did, Top Gun, I think, was perfect that Absolutely. they did just enough callback stuff in it where they yep. didn't make it completely cheese. They you didn't know, hit you over the head with a callback bullshit. Yeah, Goose's son's got to sit down and he's got to fucking play the piano like his old man did. There's, sure. there's stuff like that, that there was a little bit of cheese, but it was like, I don't know, for some reason, I felt like they had just the right amount of cheese where it was like it was allowable. And... You're right. They may need to go. They may go to the well too often on on this. And that's what I'm afraid of. But I'll go see it because it is. It's fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark. Dude, that's those movies. Super awesome. Anyway, that was number four, 1981 Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, number three, 1985 Back to the Future. I'm pretty sure I saw that in the theaters because that was like all anybody talked about that summer was fucking Back to the Future. That was everywhere it was everywhere and for some reason i didn't lose my shit over it like everybody i was just I, it, it was cool i liked it and i just i remember as the phenomenon was happening i felt like everybody liked it more than me really yeah. yes it was good it's now looking back it's a great movie it's phenomenal oh, it's a fucking awesome movie man holy shit is it great but yeah i kind of feel like everybody loved it more than me yeah, it really kind of kicked skateboarding into gear because of the whole chase scene with a skateboard, you know, and stuff. Uh, yeah. When he's being chased by Biff, um, that really got people like excited about skateboards. You know, you're, you're middle America <laughs> excited about skateboards uh, back in 1985. Uh, number two, I know for a fact I saw this in the theaters, Ghostbusters, 1984. I remember it. 
I saw it in the theater because for some weird reason, it was my dad and my brother and me. And we went to the local theater. This is back when you had like a small town theater and they were playing Ghostbusters. And, and again, I, I was never a first weekend guy. We were always way, way late in the cycle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we I were. See, I, my whole list. Do you think I fucking went opening weekend to any of these? No. My parents took me opening weekend to one movie? No. No, like, like kids who were wearing the Ghostbusters t-shirt, theirs were all yellowed and worn out by the time I saw the movie in the theater. <laughs> but it was cool, man, because like you were like, because you heard everybody talk about it in school for weeks and weeks, and then you finally went and saw it. You're like, holy fuck, that's awesome, dude. Uh, but yeah, my dad took me and my brother to see that one back in 1984, and Ghostbusters just was like, you know, you look at the effects, now you're like, that's terrible. But at the time, it was so great and funny. Yeah, you know? it was great. And Bill Murray was like at the top of his game right oh. then. And I had already loved Bill Murray. And I, I I kind of felt like, okay, Bill Murray was becoming like everybody's favorite guy. You know, yeah. like I loved meatballs and I loved stripes. And I'm like, Bill Murray's my favorite guy. And then Ghostbusters came along and I said, okay, he's too big now. Like he's not making, he's making just blockbuster movies now. Right. But he was so great in that in that movie and still had all those little subtle things. Like if you watch it now, you see all his comedy genius just oozing out of the film. You're like, oh, shit, there's some shit in here. It's funny as hell. Uh, Ghostbusters 1984. That was number two. And uh, number one, I mean, I think and I could be wrong here, but I'm almost positive. I think my parents took us to the drive in to see E.T. in 1982. <laughs> Sitting out there, popcorn, candy, the fucking hot dogs, probably a double feature and seeing E.T. and being outside as a little kid in 82. And, you know, you're, you know, you're in your car. So you look out and it's fucking dark and stars at the drive. And you're watching this alien movie. You're like, that little fucker could be coming out of the back woods right now. You know? Yeah. Such a cool experience to see it that way, you know? And yeah. you didn't see him forever. You know, it was that whole same thing with, you know, Jaws. You don't see the you don't see the damn fish for the first hour of the movie almost. You know, right. you see a fin right. here or there. You see chick flopping around in the water or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But E.T. definitely. And, and I had Jaws in there. but And I got a bunch of other movies. But it, that was a hard one to pick just five because there's so many great movies. So I, I, I predict we have one of those movies on our list together. I say one. Uh, I'm probably number wrong. five. Oh, really? E.T. Okay, there you go. My brother was more into it. So it's 82. I'm 12. And my brother is nine. Nine, I feel like, was the sweet spot. Like, my brother lost his shit. The movie's out in the summer of 82. By October, my dumb brother is wearing that E.T. smock and that plastic E.T. mask that stinks and the rubber band goes around your head. The worst. So by October, that shit's out. Yep. That was the thing about the summer blockbuster. They would get that stuff. The toys would be ready to go for that Christmas. Oh, yeah. You had, so, the, toys, you had the, the McDonald's Happy Meal all summer. Yes. The little shitty toys. Then you got your Halloween costumes. Then they had the Christmas. Yeah, it was genius, man, how they put the shit together. Yeah. That year, I can tell you the year was 1982, and my <laughs> brother went as stinky plastic mask E.T. Oh, um, my God, it's great. He lost his shit because he got E.T. for Christmas. He had the little doll. He took it everywhere with him. So I put it on there because it it was a big deal in our household. Sure. You know, I also kind of looked at it like not what I liked. I kind of I, I looked at it because, number one, I always view summertime as like being just an amazing time when you're a kid. Just that's when all the cool stuff, you're not in school. And then when a movie overtook that summer that, you know, it wasn't I thought it was really great. I thought it was really great. I just remember my brother absolutely just losing his shit over E.T. Um, that's my number five. My number four. Rocky two. I didn't have any Dude. Rockies on my list. Rocky 2. Now, Rocky 1, I don't know when that came out, but I, I know like that I had seen it. 77, 76? Rocky, Rocky 2 is 79. Rocky 1 is 76. Yeah, yeah. Best Picture, 76. It, it came out in 76. Um, I did not go to the theaters to see that. So 
that's already on TV somehow. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I love the character and I love Rocky and my mom loved it. She loved Sylvester Stallone. She went to the theater. I, I did not go see Rocky in the theater. I'm, I'm almost positive that that's already on television at some point. The anticipation of Rocky two, and then seeing him fucking shredded and then three and just getting more and more shredded for each one. Yeah. But the difference in he was so lean in two because he was a little bulky, you know, in Rocky one. But he was supposed to be that way because he was a street fighter. Yeah, he's doughy. So, yeah. Yeah. He was a little doughy. But Rocky two. Fuck, man. Th you cannot tell me that that movie is I, I will argue. Till the end that that movie is just as good as Rocky one. Yeah, it's just as good. And that's the one that he, you know, spoiler alert from uh, 1979. Uh, he wins. Yo, Adrian, we did it. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah. the ending. If you're not fucking tearing up at that, that his great. face is just annihilated. Adrian, we did it. Did it. Yeah. All right. Did it. Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't get to the Rocky. Like, I saw Rocky one, I saw Rocky two, but I didn't get on the Rocky train till uh, the Russian one. Was that three or four? Four, the Russian because one. three is Mr. T. That's right. And then four is the Russian. Yeah, that's where, you know, spoiler alert, that's where Creed dies and, and the whole fucking thing. Yeah, it's that one. <laughs> In I four, right. Yeah, four was fucking great. And then I went back and, and I actually watched Rocky one like a year ago. And uh, I remember being younger and watching it going, this is fucking boring except for the fight stuff. But I didn't get all the relationship and how cool of a dude he was, and he's dumb, but yet he's smart, and the the nuance. It's a love story. And I didn't catch all that the first time I watched it when I was younger, man. I watched it recently. I'm like, oh shit, this is a good fucking movie. <laughs> uh, fun fact: Sylvester Stallone still has Cuff and Link. He still has the turtles. Jeez. From 1976, those baby turtles that he bought at Adrian's uh, pet oh, store. Yeah. He has Cuff and Link to this day. He still has them, and they're, you know, they're um, Frisbee size. You know, and this is just totally off subject, but uh, you probably saw this, but he had a house out in L.A. somewhere, and he sold it to a Dell, right? And yes. apparently uh, outside by his pool, he had a huge statue of him, like the one in Philadelphia. Right. That he, yes. they put up in the movie. And and, and she said, uh, I'm keeping that. Right. That. And he's like, no, I want the statue back. That's coming with me. She's like, go fuck yourself. I'm not buying the house unless I keep the Rocky statue. That was yeah. a deal. And he said, all right, I guess you keep it. <laughs> like, what awesome. the fuck? Just another reason to, to love Adele. Yes, of course. She's awesome. Uh, so number four, Rocky, seeing that in the theater. Amazing. And, you know, that, again, my mom is into it. Yeah. So that's kind of all of us. Well, that's my mom and the three kids. My dad was working, I'm sure. Uh, but that's us in the theater watching Rocky and just fucking losing my mind. Yeah. Um, probably three or four weeks after it had come out. Sure. And we were going when we went during the day because it was cheaper. Uh, number three, the newest movie on my list, 1987. Lost Boys. Oh, shit. That is Dude, I movie. went to the theater. Now, that's my senior year. And that's the first time that the vampires that are being depicted are our age. Right. And they're cool. And it's rock and roll and everything. There's no Twilight. There's no nothing with all of these cool vampires without the Lost Boys. Everything before that was fucking Bella Lugosi, right? I mean, I, yeah, you know, I don't cheesy one, it, but there was no cool vampires. Yeah, they made it a rock was star. Lost Boys. Yep. Keeper Sutherland with the mullet. Maybe the he claims that he invented the mullet. He claims that's the first one on the big screen. Um, Yours was second, then I guess <laughs> I was number two. Yeah, nineteen eighty-seven. Yeah, I kind of. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Fuck him. I had that haircut in. I had that haircut in ninth grade. He didn't invent oh, the fucking mullet. Oh, my God. Um, Check the yeah, math on that Yeah, 1987. Uh, it comes out July 31st. Dude, I go to the theater very shortly after that movie comes out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, getting back to your point about you were the age of, you know, Kiefer in the movie, right? Or basically the same age as all those guys running around. 
that that's where we kind of got lucky in a lot of different ways as kids. It's like, you know, you're talking about your brother, E.T. Well, those kids in the movie E.T. were all that age. They were your age. They were your brother's age in that movie. Drew know? Barrymore. Yeah, and then Drew Barrymore was like five She's or the little six. girl in it. You know what I right. mean? Like, she's out there. She's our age. But we, you know, we, I don't know. Maybe this happens more often than it doesn't. But it seems like every time I see a movie with a kid in it, they always seem to be my age. You know, the Goonies. I'm like, yeah, those kids are my age. Awesome. You know what I mean? You always can relate so well to the movie. You're like, yeah, I know these kids, you know? Yeah. I don't know if that's just a weird phenomenon or recency, you know? But it always seemed like, hey, those kids are my age. No shit. Yeah, and it seemed like they're, they looked so cool and you wanted to look like them. They looked like a band, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just... And the music, I'm trying to think of another movie that I really like. That's one of the earliest movies that I, I connected. I mean, obviously... Dude, when I the Tiger came out and that sort of thing for you know yeah. Rocky three, it, it, it was great. But the whole movie and the 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 soundtrack, like I bought the vinyl. I went out and bought Lost Boys. I went out and bought the vinyl because the songs were so great in it. You know, right. it had that great in excess Jimmy Barnes cover, uh, "Gonna Have a Good Time Tonight," and it's played yep. twice in the movie too. So Lost Boys in at number three, uh, in at number two, the year. Is 1977. My mother takes the three kids again to the movie theater, the Summit Park Mall. Yeah. She goes up to the front desk and the woman says, it's $4 a person. My mom says, what? $4 a person. My mom had never, ever spent anything like that before in her life on a movie. And then, you know, she's definitely the old timer talking about paying, you know, 25 cents to go watch fucking Flash Gordon at the Riviera. Right. So $4, I don't think my mom has enough for all of us. So little Randy Ryan, little Rodney Ryan, and Susie Ryan, $4 a kid, here's 12 bucks, not a nickel for fucking popcorn, not any, nothing. My mom goes, go, I'll come and pick you up. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> Star. They charged more for Star Wars. That movie cost more than any other movie. Um, it, it was just one of those. It was one of those things that they talked about on the news. Like not only is Star Wars this big phenomenon, but can can you believe they're charging four dollars? Like the matinee was four bucks. Right. 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 Um, I don't know if my mom didn't have any more money. <laughs> I've talked about it with her, and she says I might not have had money. Um. I tend to believe that she had a couple more dollars, but she just thought that was the dumbest thing she had ever heard. And that's not her thing. She was definitely taking us because the kids wanted to go see it. But yeah, it was four bucks. You know, it's funny about the Star Wars thing is that um, it couldn't have been early on because when they released it, it only got released in a couple of theaters and they didn't think it was going to work. Even George Lucas has said, uh, I didn't, I, by the time we got that movie done and out, I, I was like, I didn't care. I, I didn't think it was going to work. <clears throat> and uh, and it obviously worked, you know, quite well. It came out May 25th. You're right. I'm not seeing that thing until mid-summer. So I, I promise you I didn't see that movie until the end of July. Because what they probably figured out was that people were going to go see it a second time, and it, and it just caught like wildfire. So they're like, well, fuck it. Let's go see if we can upcharge and, and make more money. And it, guess what? That worked out quite well for them. Four bucks. Um, God, I would kill for a $4 movie now. $2. Uh, number two was Star Wars. And, you know, obviously – just you could I think all of them, I think Empire and Jedi, I think they all came out in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. They're um, great. And number one was Jaws. I mean, yep. the one that kind of started it all. Again, to be on my list, I had to be in the theater. And I have told this story at nauseum, but 1975, when I go see the movie, I'm 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 five years old. Yeah. And I don't know what the fuck my parents were thinking, but because we had little Randy Ryan. My mom took my sister one day and then my dad took me the next day. And, and that's the one that I went, I, I pissed like every time I, da, da, dad, I got to go to the bathroom. I, I went to the bathroom at least 13 times. And I remember my dad being so pissed because I was young. He had to go with me to the bathroom. Sure. I was so, every time I got scared, I'm like, let's go. I got to go to the bathroom. My dad's like, what the fuck again? Kid my dad was kid. so mad. <clears throat> we get home. And he goes, the goddamn kid went to the bathroom 10 times. I missed the movie. <laughs> I was scared, dude. I was scared. 
but I was scaroused. I was so into it. Like it was the coolest thing ever that Christmas you get the jaws game. It's got the rubber thing and you're trying to pull like shit out of his mouth and not have it snap shot. Yeah. By the time I go to school that year, so 75, 1975, whatever grade I'm in, I, in first grade, and we made TV sets out of, we had to save like a cardboard box and we had two rolls of paper and you rolled the paper across the screen and I made the Jaws movie. I made Jaws like the beginning. Oh, wow. Here's where the head pops out of the fucking boat, which is the scariest thing ever. <laughs> you know, the heck's that guy's name? I'll think of it in a second. Um, but yeah, I made the whole movie up to the end with the explosion and everything. And you had to like turn the the paper towel roll. roll. Right. And, it and I made the Jaws across. movie. We had to do it for school project. <laughs> Yeah, see, I didn't see still, Jaws in the theater. Still to this day, I mean, Jaws in the theater, little kid. You would never, you would never fucking take a five-year-old to that movie. No. no but no, it was no. PG, dude. Well, PG meant different things back then, you know. <clears throat> I've got myself in trouble trying to, you know, when my kid was younger, I'd be like, oh, let's watch this movie. It's PG. And then you're like, wait, they could say a lot of other stuff in PG and show a lot more back in the day in the PG movie. I'm like, okay, maybe this is a mistake. Um, you know, one of the couple of them that were missing for me, uh, remember the movie The Fugitive, Harrison Ford, 1993? That was a great movie. When I when you start looking at summer blockbusters, Harrison Ford, man, between Star Wars, the indie, that, and there's another one that was kind of big too. Um I mean, he owned, owned. Yeah, the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, I think I saw an 80 in the theater. And I just remember like at the end of it, you're like, what? No way, man. You know, <laughs> he's, he's his dad. No shit. And like the the wait for Return of the Jedi. I remember just everyone. It's all we talked about. Fucking when's Jedi coming out? When's the next movie coming out? And then I remember when Return of the Jedi came out, like just being like, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go see that movie. And then I watched. I'm like, oh, OK. All right. It's OK, I guess. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't like it was great, but it your anticipation for that third movie was so high uh, when Jedi came out. It was like, holy shit, I cannot wait. Yeah, Star Wars was just, it launched, I mean, I, I can't even imagine there's even, I don't remember even one person saying that they weren't into Star Wars like when it came out, you know? So the other ones, you just had to go to see those other movies. Well, they were so great. It was such Everybody a great experience did. in the theater as well because it was new. It was different. You didn't see those special effects. I mean, you were in space. You went to that movie and it was like, holy shit, you're in outer space and the music was just unbelievable when it hit on the title credits where it was like laying way back and leaning. You had to try to figure out how to fucking read that terrible font and and then the music kicks in. You're like, holy fuck. Fuck, here we go. Dude, was Grease a summer movie? I feel like it was. Seems like it should have been because it felt very summerish. You know what I mean? I like, feel like it was. Years. And I can only remember, I almost put it on my list, but I, I I almost put it on my list because number one, it's it's one of two movies that I can remember my whole family, meaning my old man was there. He wasn't working. He actually went to the movies with us. And Greece, obviously, at the end of it with Olivia Newton John, it was like my first boner ever. So right. when she was wearing all that, I feel like, like that was the summer of my first bone. I think Greece, I think Greece was a summer movie. Yeah, I don't, I, it didn't come up anywhere. You know what? Honorable mention, my first boner, I'm going to write Greece 5B. Jesus, 5B because of a boner. Right? For the boner, 5B for the bone, my first bone. See, I never like, saw that. What's happening to my pants here? What's going on? Kind of like tighter. those pants and shoes on that girl. That 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 girly up there. She's she's not <laughs> icky anymore. Why, what's up with her? Like why, her. Is, why is she she doesn't have cooties? The rest of them got cooties. What's up, man? Um, yeah, I didn't see that in the theater, but like they do always show it on TV like once a year, and I'd, I'd watch it with my family. You know, Grace is oh shit, Grace, let's watch it. You know? Yeah, we went to the theater to go see that. So my first boner, the first time, like my little my little wiener, like went into my belly. Ben Gardner's boat, dude. Jaws, that's the one. My little five-year-old pecker went right inside because that damn head pops out. That's when Hooper drops the drops the 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 tooth the size of a shot glass. Oh yeah. Because the mayor yeah. goes, You got the shot, you got the tooth. 
It's like, no, I dropped it. I dropped ben Gardner it. fucking popped out of the boat. Ooh, gross. Yeah, no, you know what? I'm going to have to watch that movie because like 4th of July weekend here, the, the we're recording before that, uh, before 4th of July uh, weekend. I'm going to have to put that one on. I haven't seen it in a while, like a long while. It's been a minute. So you have no superhero movies. I got them on a list like um, <clears throat> Iron Man. That's the first one that kicked that whole Marvel thing off back in 2008. Yeah. That was a summer movie. That. I, I yeah. remember that specifically being a summer blockbuster movie. Because it killed. I mean, it absolutely. I, it, I didn't feel like it beat the other ones, but such a great fucking. Uh, but go movie. back to like my criteria, which whatever, you don't have to do that. Were you into that or is that something that you got into it with your son? Um, I was not into it at all. I didn't know who the fuck Iron Man was. I knew Superman. I knew, you know, I knew the obviously the big ones. That was I, yeah. I, I was into the old super old old Christopher Reeve Superman movies. I love those. And then this Iron Man thing came out and I saw it. I'm like, that looks fucking awesome. I didn't know shit. I don't read comic books. And I went to the theater and saw it. And I was like, this is fucking great. This is absolutely great. And then I saw the Captain America and then I just fell into it. And then as my son got older, we started watching them together. And then it, by the time he got old enough. We kind of caught up with it, you know, as they were coming out. And then we took the ride all the way to the end uh, of the, the original Avengers series. And it just, fuck, they were all great. I loved all that shit. But but now I've gone and seen a couple other Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And I'm like, ah, who gives a shit? I, I don't care anymore. It, it it lost its luster. It's it's like a, like they call, call it superhero fatigue, I guess. Like it's the same fucking movie now over and over again. Ooh, shiny object. Everyone's got to have it. Bad guy, good guy. Beat the shit out of each other for two hours. And that's why they have 45 cameos in the flash. Cause he's not strong enough to carry his own movie. And they're right. doing all this. Is are you into that? The flash. I'll wait till it comes on TV. You know what I mean? Okay. Or, or, you know, I, I'm like, I, I mean, I like those movies. They're fun. I like the production of it all and all the crazy, but I'm like, it just becomes monotonous. It just becomes noise after a while. You know, if there's not a great story, yeah. who gives a shit, you know, but um, if you watched uh, up yet with your kid, so he ties all the balloons to his house, the old guy. We have, uh, we watched it when she was really young. So yeah. I need to revisit that. That one is, uh, that movie's great. I love that movie. Yeah. We definitely have watched it before. I know Aunt Sue's really trying to get her into like Nemo and stuff. And it's just not her jam, man. She's into the princesses. Those are It'll the jams. Around. It'll the come princesses around. Princesses are big. Nemo's great. Nemo's a great one. We were sitting out by the pool or something or outside. You, you forget the little outside TV going, put on Nemo. Everybody's watching because fuck everybody loves Nemo. <laughs> it's great. So I had, I mean, I wanted to recognize Raiders of the Lost Arks. Those yep. are phenomenal. All great. Um, The one that I put just because it's not for me, but maybe this is just to kind of like maybe rattle something in somebody else's brain that, that shares their top five with us. Do you remember the internet phenomenon, the first ever internet phenomenon movie, Blair Witch. Oh, uh, yeah, because it was so fucking cheaply made, like 35000 bucks on... And the internet was so new about it. Like, the internet was... The internet itself was new, so right. there was so much false information out there, and we didn't even know about fake news. So I remember for a long time thinking, I think this is, like, something that really happened somewhere. Right, right. And, right. It, and they played it beautifully... And it was like the greatest first internet hoax almost. Brilliant marketing. And it was everywhere. Yeah. It was absolutely everywhere in the infancy of the internet. Um, I mean, I realized the internet was around, but 1999 is pretty fucking early on that shit. Pretty new, and, pretty uh, slow, pretty slow. Dial up. And they, and I, I just feel like they had everybody talking. They had everybody talking. And it was the first time that the internet was talking about it. Yeah, I don't. I've never seen Blair Witch. Um, never, never I never saw it. it either. I just don't watch that genre of movies. I'm, I've never um, seen it. But I mentioned that. I think all the Pirates of the Caribbeans come out in the summer. Yeah, those are summertime movies. I didn't even put those on the list. They're good. But I think those whatever. are. I think those are big. I, I did definitely. I, I wanted to shout out. I did go see it in the theater. Uh, June eleventh, nineteen eighty six. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, that's a good one. I didn't see that in the theater though. I but saw yeah. it in the theater, and then my dad saw it in the theater. Like he had gone. And I remember talking with him about it. And he just thought that that kid, he's like, man, that kid. It's like, you know, my dad is just like, you know, such a cornball. He's like, man, that kid, he just got out of everything, man. That kid, like, they just couldn't catch him. <laughs> it was I'm like, yeah, dad, I agree. Yeah, Ferris Bueller's yeah. fucking dope. 
He's greasy. That kid, they just could not. That kid was outsmarted everybody. <laughs> if he only really liked it. If only C. Breezy was, was so smart. <laughs> C. Breezy was not as smooth. C. Breezy never saw Ferris Bueller's day off. This is the problem. See, this is if you're going to start stealing cars or, or just finding keys in them, you need to start watching like Ferris Bueller to get some tips on how to get away. No one thinks – everyone knows they can steal a car. It's yes. getting away with it is the problem, okay? It's the problem. Getting away with it, that's what no one ever thinks about. Um, yeah, Dude. good movies. Uh, yeah, I, I had Jaws. Forrest Gump came out in the summer and Saving Private Ryan. Both Ryan. movies came out in the summer. Summer, And, you know, the, Saving Private Ryan is like one of my favorite movies of all time. It just didn't do – you know, obviously my summer blockbuster movies were, you know, when I was young, right. When it affected my life. And I feel like that you couldn't even leave your house. You didn't want to see anybody until you saw the movie. Cause you knew they were going to be talking about it. Correct. And that was, that was part of my criteria as well. You know? So it's just the summer blockbuster thing. It, it's more of a young thing for me, or, you know, I can see you taking the approach of like going to see these with your kid. Right. Right. But it, it's like, I haven't gone to the theater like since COVID, Obviously, I didn't go then, and then I think I've gone twice since. So it's been years. And I went, like I said, I just saw the Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> My house has got more treats. I can walk to the bathroom. I don't really miss anything. Um, it's bigger. It's louder here, but I've You're spent old. a lot of money. And I'm like, I, I old balls. Fuck. Yeah. No, I know. I guess that's it. I guess maybe I've, I'm old, and I've seen too many movies, or I don't know. I just was like, Okay. Why am I here? So the last time I went to the movies was Top Gun. I'm glad I went. I had a fucking blast, dude. Yep. It was the it was the right movie to see in the theater. And I thought, okay, this is gonna get me back in the theater. I'm back, baby. I'm back. You yeah. know? And that was the first movie I saw since the pandemic. I think since my kid was born, you know, because I had the kid, then the pandemic. So there's just a lot of reasons not to go out, right? And I haven't been back since to anything, you know, the, the only thing that I maybe thought about going to the theater was to see Elvis. And I spent the $25 to watch it from my couch. Right. right. <laughs> but that's the only, and then I'm going to sit go here and bitch. I don't want movie theaters to go away. Well, I'm not fucking doing anything to help them stay open. No, but I'm not going to go to the theater to watch a comedy. I, I, if it's going to be like, I'll go see Raiders. The Lost Ark, whatever the new one is, fucking Indiana Jones, the new one. Yeah, I'll see that in the theater because that's going to be big and you want to see that. But there's a lot of movies. I'm not going to go to the theater for a lot of that shit. It's going to have to be like the Top Guns or the superheroes or the, uh, you know, the dinosaur movies. Those because, you know, they put so much shit into the sound and the look of it all that I want to see on the big screen. But most of it, I won't. I still like going to the movies. They're still cool. It's just I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, you're right. I gotta fucking get in my car and I gotta drive and I gotta get there. And then, you know, the whole thing. I take that back because something did come out after that. And I, I was amazed at it. Cause I'm, this is how, this is how out of the movies I am. I'm thinking you can still go buy a fucking movie ticket, get in there early and take a seat somewhere. You know? mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> that's how old, that's the dinosaur that's talking on this podcast right now. Jesus like blue. I have only, I've only probably pre-reserved maybe three movies in my life on the internet. I mean, that's kind of a, in the last, you know, eight year thing. Yeah. So I wanted to go see something and it just was stupid. I'm like, no, fuck no. I'm not sitting here, here or here. Yeah. It seemed crazy to me. So that was kind of a turnoff to me. Yeah. Four dollars. I'm not, dude, I'm not I know four dollars. I bought four dollars. I'm turning into my mom. Uh, the apple and the tree, huh? Wow. I see. I like the seating because anytime I used to go back in the day with my family or my wife, it's like we'd be scrambling balls to get there. And then you fucking buy the ticket, you get your food, and you walk, go to walk in thinking, oh, I'm gonna get a great seat. And you'd be sitting in like in the second row, or you'd be sitting on the edges. And I'm like, Yeah, fuck me, man. You just got a plan though. I mean, if you're going to a movie like <laughs> I need to, I mean, I need to do better on this. I'm going to get into this wheelhouse. Uh, I think uh, London's mom took her to the little mermaid. Nice. And maybe that's what I was looking at. And I was just seeing sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. Like, fuck. I mean, what the, are, I might, do I got to go to StubHub to get a movie seat for my kid to go to a movie? 
Yeah, it's, I it's a, a, like a scalper. Oh yeah, no, I would never do that. But yeah, no, you got. I I don't mind booking the seat ahead of time and and having you that. You just got to do it ahead of time, though. You just got to be smart. If you really want to go see something, you got to get in early, like a week early. Well, if you're going to go opening weekend or that first couple weeks, but I never end up doing that. It's always like, you know, okay. I, we were the only people in the theater the other day. It was awesome. It didn't matter if we pre-bought seats, but it's the way to go. I, I, I like the pre-buying of the seats, man. But yeah, it's expensive. And then like, you know, the movie time, it, it said, oh, it starts at 615. That fucking movie didn't start to like 650 between the commercials and the trailers and the bullshit. I'm like, dude. Don't okay. tell me that. Not that long. It was forever. And I, I don't mind the movie trailers. I like that. That's fun. That's half the game of going to the theater, right? It's I like movie the, trailers. I love that shit. But after a while, I'm like, how many are they playing? We stuck in a loop here or something? What's going on? Like five or six? Okay, I got it. But then it just kept going. I'm like, can we? I don't want to have to get up and take a piss. I've just drank a gallon of lemonade. What's going on? <laughs> Any right, final thoughts? The- Any final thoughts, Rod? Yeah, I do. And I I didn't want to be bummer guy, but I, I'm scrolling, maybe watching some uh, Instagram reels. And when you stop at something, then the algorithm says, oh, you must want to see more of these. And I'm seeing it more and more. And it's it's talking about that June is men's mental health month. Have you seen any of those? No. <laughs> There's a no. lot of them. It, it, everybody's using the same sound, and it's just, you know, everybody's using their own videos, and, and it says, hey, June is Men's Mental Health Month, uh, and, you know, nobody's really talking about it, that type of thing. And and I kind of I, – I haven't mentioned it on the air. I haven't said anything anywhere about it, and I, I don't want to – I, I want to keep it light, tight, and bright, but then every now and then it's like, fuck, man, I feel like I really should have said something on the air – when we're recording this, it's the 28th. I'll probably say something on the radio on the 29th. It's like I missed the whole goddamn month. Um, yeah. Mental health for men, 60 and 60. And I'll just leave it at that. 60 and 60. This is really, really disturbing. And I had a bad couple of two years. Um, I don't know what it is with guys that are our age, Jason. Back home, you know, talking with our buddy Briggs, man. We know six guys. Him and I, we know six dudes that took their lives in the last couple of years. In the last Jeez. two years, we know six guys that are our age. So, again, I, the, the number is 60 and 60. I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, this is coming from, um, I think, the CDC. Every 60 minutes, we lose 60 men to suicide. That's it. Wow. 60 and 60. I didn't. I never heard that number. I've heard the military number. I've heard other things. But... There's just still a stigma where dudes are not talking and I, it, it, it freaked me out over the last couple of years that guys that are our age, what's going on with a 50 year old man right now, what's happening to a 50 year old guy. I mean, I know I had a hell of a year, you know, I got divorced, tore my leg in half. Um, Never, ever would I ever consider that too much to live for and all of that. But what are these guys what are our guys, our guys, what are our guys, what are we, what are they going through around this age? I mean, I can't sit there and diagnose that shit, but I know yeah. that I had a, a, a buddy, uh, a guy I went to high school with a, a few weeks ago. He, uh, he, he passed away. And again, you know, same age as us and stuff. And then my other buddy, my buddy, Eric, uh, texted me like two days later. He goes, Hey man, did you see the news? I go, yeah. He goes, Hey man, everything cool on your end. And I'm like, yeah, dude, how about you? Everything cool. Yeah. yeah. And he just checked in like, hey, man, been a minute. How's, how's things? Everything cool? Everything, yeah, everything. Went back and forth for a couple minutes. And it's like, that's what I find that I was always terrible at, but I've gotten better in the last few years with that kind of thing. You know, just, hey, man, how's things? What's up? What's up, dog? How's C Breezy? You know, that kind of thing. You know, like, what's up? And I think that's part of it. Dudes just don't fucking talk. We Well, think about our generation, dude. You never saw your dad other than be angry, <laughs> mad. He didn't show emotions. My dad never showed emotions no. like that. That shit wasn't going to happen. You, and then what what happens if you did? I mean, when you when you were like ten and you skinned your knee and you start crying, everyone, all your buddies are like, "Man up, pussy." You know what I mean? You're not supposed to. That's that's been the mentality for Gen X. You know, ah, you pussy. What are you crying for? Get up, wuss. You know what I mean? Like all that. Now it's like if you start talking feelings as a dude, everyone's like, "Okay, I guess that's what we're doing." <laughs> Have you ever heard the sixty and sixty number no. before? No. No, no, so no, 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 no. a simple Google search on this, 
Movember, 60 men die by suicide every hour. <clears throat> Jeez. There's all these different things. And the number is 60 in 60 suicide men. One man dies by suicide every minute of every day, of every that, hour, of every is day. Is that in the U.S.? Yeah. Um, it's got to be in the U.S. Oh, it's globally. globally. Yeah. It's a, right here it says globally. Man, so, I don't know. I, I never heard that 60 number, and that kind of really kind of rocked me when I, I knew I was going to mention this at the end of the show. And again, I'm sorry. I, I want to keep it tight. And it's the end of the month, but fuck, man, it, it was a, it was a rough year for me. And, uh, and, and I'm not even anywhere in that discussion. What's going, what's going on with these guys that have no other way, you know, to go. It, it just, it kind of blows my mind. So I'd wish I'd mentioned it earlier in the month. So I, how are you going to follow that, Jason? I don't know. I'm not gonna. Um, what you do is you, you just you just punt uh, on that on that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull an audible on that one. No, but uh, you know what? It's and it's always weird that you see afterwards, like, oh, I wish they would have talked to me. I wish they would have said something. I wish they would have talked to me. If you're if that's your decision at the end, man. I mean, that's you feel like you got nobody. I think I don't know. It seems like yeah. that, but you do, and that's the thing, man. You know, you always got somebody. There is somebody out there. Someone's going to help you. Someone's willing to help, you know? And if you I've have had... nobody, um, dial 988. They, that's like the new 911. For okay. If you need the, the crisis hotline, <clears throat> I used to struggle with the 1-800 number, and thank God they came up with it. So it's a national number. Dial 988. You will have a human being on the other line. What will also help, Rod, is um, what's the number for the Hall & Oates? Call and Oates. Do you know that number offhand? I don't that, remember Call and Oates. Call and Oates I, is a number I don't think, that I, I think it was a regular number. I think the funny part of it was that it was called Call and Oates. Call and Oates. Yeah, I think that number. If you call that, that might pull you out of the out of the fucking doldrums. Not to make light of this, but uh, I'm seven one nine two six seven one nine two six Oates. Of course it is. Of course, it's Oats. That's calling Oats, and then you'll get. Um, <laughs> we did this bit twenty years ago, and apparently the line because I, I think we tried this not that long ago, but it's a dedicated Hall and Oats hotline, and it's still active. So, oh my God, calling Oats, I love it. So that's a better. If your number kids are giving you blank looks, they're like Hall and who? Have them call in Oats, and then have them listen to some tunes on the phone, old school. I think it's it's an emergency backup, man. See, there you go. Yeah, you got to twist it back around on a positive note. There you go. Call and Oates. There you go. What are you going to call? Call and Oates. Well, all right, man. Episode 90 in the books, man. Uh, check out the YouTube channel. You can watch this thing on YouTube. You uh, you like, you subscribe, you smash all the subscribe buttons. Uh, follow yes. us. Give us your top five lists, comments, good and bad. We don't give a shit. Throw them up there on our Facebook page, on our uh, Instagram, on the Twitter page. And uh, there you go. That's 90 of these episodes. Holy shit, man. So there you go. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Let's go. It's time. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. See us on our YouTube channel. And follow our social media pages at Play Pants Pod.